You know, uh, I had a big birthday this summer, uh, seven decades, you know. And so it's often said one way is to, uh, when, when you turn some of these, uh, hit some of these milestones, is to think back what you did uh, maybe half that time, because I would often tell people, hey, I'm 35 for the second time, right? <laughs> so uh, what were some of the things that I did when I was 35 that I, that I might try doing again? Uh, Gee, could I uh, become a Republican? Uh, that always gets a laugh. Uh, what about an Episcopalian? Maybe uh, grow some hair? Uh, watch Archie Bunker on all the family reruns? Uh, wrong. No. How about uh, competitive softball at age 70, no less, right? Not as a coach, an umpire, a broadcaster, scorekeeper, even a fan. All things I've done. But uh, an actual player. Yeah, really. OK, don't laugh. So where does a 70-year-old who is uh, my size get to live out this vision? Is this Fantasy Island? Uh, no. Turns out it's in, of all places, Wayland, where for the last 35 years they have a league for senior softballers, ages 55 to 85. And uh, hey, I'd be middle-aged again, wouldn't I? Do the math on that, right? So uh, you know, is this real, or is this the uh, Eastern Mass version of the movie The Awakening? Uh, no, it's real. So I go to actually have to try out to get evaluated because they try to keep the league fairly competitive. And they weren't sure whether I was a guy my size, might be David Ortiz, mess things up, or uh, then again, uh, maybe David Letterman, you know. But no, uh, I'm, uh, I go off with the same enthusiasm of a 12 year old going off to uh, Little League for the first time. And, uh, when I mention that to some of the old timers over there, they look at me and they say, well, if so, then Dave, you're old because most of us feel closer to 10. Okay? Uh, but but they, uh, after my tryouts, they, uh, they put me on a team. And uh, lo and behold, the team doesn't need a first baseman, which I kind of resemble, a, a designated hitter maybe. No, they need a second baseman. Now, for you baseball fans out there in second base land, you start to thinking of Dustin Pedroia. Fast, nimble, quick. This is not Dave, OK? <laughs> but there I go. What the heck? Give it a try. And uh, baseball, and especially softball, which seemed like a very slow game when you see it on television, it's actually quite fast when you're out there standing in the dirt and you haven't done it in a while. You know, batted balls come at me like the runners, and runners at different heights and sizes. They're going through my legs and over my head. Runners are dashing past. And uh, you know, the mental algebra all of a sudden begins to resemble rocket science. I mean, I'm just kind of dazed, but uh, you know, that's just, my, that's just the mental side of the game, the physical side. First day I'm there, ooh, new muscles, hamstrings. Ooh, hadn't thought of a groin in a while. Oh, what's this about? Oh, a kill, oh no. So my first call when I get home after the first day <laughs> is not to my agent to get a contract. <laughs> Oh no, it's the physical therapist, okay? And uh, her uh, initial consolation to me is, well, Dave, uh, it's a good thing you didn't take up downhill skiing. <laughs> but um, anyway, I quickly learned that to play about two hours of competitive softball every week takes about three, uh, three days of, uh, of competitive stretching, okay? But I'm committed. I probably should have been committed, but I'm out there and I go home and uh, Finally, after a couple of weeks, I return home with the ultimate badge of honor. Yes, the dirty shirt, the messy pants, and a big smile on my face. My wife looks at me, she says, Dave, are you okay? What happened? Did you throw up all over yourself? I said, no, no, I'm, I'm just a second baseman. That's what I said, because when a hard line drive came at me and bounced off my legs, I reached for it. I stumbled to my knees, the dirty pants. I leaned forward. I fell to my chest. The ball went still further in front of me. I reached further, the further dirty chest. I reached the ball. The runner was moving to first. I took my big right hand and I whacked the ball like that. It rolled to the first baseman. He picks it up. The umpire says, out. The runner was out. Now, this runner was not Jacoby Ellsbury, I saw tell you, for those of you who know fast runners. Maybe it was his grandfather. But anyway, mission accomplished. Tur turn it turns out he was actually the, uh, the president of the league. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's not, anyway. But as for the dive that I took, I'm told if I'd been in the Olympics, the Russian judge would have given me a four and a half. My teammates said, no, that was a nine and a half, and we're not going to call you the rookie anymore. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, so was this the awakening, the curious case of Benjamin Button, or merely a schoolboy response to what I did the summer I turned 12 for about the sixth time? Thank you. This is a brand new one. What do you do when you're a wild woman Trapped in a meek and mild woman Take a walk on the dangerous side Woman, just keep moving on What do you do when you're a wild woman? Untamed, feral child woman Unchained, volatile woman Just keep moving on And sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho and just keep moving on Come on, howl at the moon, woman Bust right out of that room, woman Trust your inner fool, woman Just keep moving on Brace and scandalized, woman Stung by mosquitoes and lies, woman Shake your fist to the angry skies, woman Just keep moving on And sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho Everywhere you go Gonna pull out the witch's broom, woman Dance on the troubles and gloom, woman Face down the devil and doom, woman Just keep moving on Kick up the boogie and jive, woman Jump off the cliff and survive, woman Laugh out loud, you're alive, woman just keep moving on And sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Sing louder than the trumpets of Jericho And just keep moving on Just keep moving on There are mountains, hills of sand lose their shape when a cat sneezes. Mounds of clay shudder and crack when crows speak, screech. Cairns built from small pebbles, icebergs grown from old snow gatherings of ancient leaves, piles of dead letters come alive during sleep. After a day's work at the home office, after packing the car with camping gear for a two week stay, after the long drive slowed by traffic, after pulling into the campground and snagging the last spot on the pond, after the hour it takes to park and set up the tent in the darkening light, night, the dripping rain, after finally eating what would constitute dinner, four carrots with hummus, while seated dry in the driver's seat of my parked car, after of my parked car, after a day of not even, even stretching, after gathering my swim gear, clothing, and towel, headlamp affixed, I step carefully down the steep root-strewn path that must lead to the pond. At the water, in the almost pure dark, 
The rain still drizzles. Before stepping in, I strip and don my goggles, cap, and fins. Before I set out, I make a mental note of my entry point and its surroundings. There is no moon. My splashing strokes, the birds, and the constant drip. By the time I am ready to stop swimming, the sky is clear, the Big Dipper revealed. A Venus peers down at the lone nude swimming in the dark. After I think I am nearing my entry point, after trying one cove and the next, after every opening in the trees looks like every other, after swimming in and out of every cove, after approaching every big rock twice, each blocked by dead wood wrong or grasses wrong or other stones wrong, all the while swimming, a repetition of coves. After wishing I had my glasses, my suit, considering a cry for help, I wonder, could I spend the night on a rock or sleep in the shallows? Do the turtles sleep and the fish, or do they nibble all night? Should I swim to a beach and walk out on the road naked without light? I am Venus, without her shell, only fins. Would I purse a coy smile if caught? When I wake up, he changes me and gives me juice to drink. Cereal, toast, or, jo or donuts, James? Tell me, what do you think? He wears a hat and sings a song and marches in my combine. I feel so proud to, God, I'm so emotional, to, to lead the way. I love that pal of mine. My goodness. He walks and talks and plays with me and throws me to the sky. I feel so tall when I'm with him, although I'm just a little guy. He hits some balls in our backyard and lets me be his caddy. I love him more than anything. He's my friend, Daddy. Here is an ode to a mountain. Uh, oh, your, uh, oh, your, to your, or oh, your, oh, your imposing shadow, your intimidating height, and your majestic view from the top. Once uh, you graciously give to us, once we have braved the uh, weather and harsh conditions, makes you the one, the mountain above all others, not only in height but in beauty. The one we, we must all climb, regardless of the danger, because you put a spell on us. Um, to make us forget and not to care about the danger you hold contained in you, letting it out in small amounts to test us, to make sure we are worthy of your majestic view, and only letting us know that we must climb you, and we must make it to the top no matter what the danger. I dreamed I saw a wave breaking down on me a giant breaking wave racing towards me the first time on a beach I was the sea Fled inland and when it hit, I stumbled and was gone. And last night I dreamed a second wave breaking down on me, a second breaking wave. 
racing towards me. We learn today how to believe that all that's true, well, it's in our reach. And all else are just fairy tales, our children's fantasies. We ignore those clues in the red sunset, in the corners of our eyes, and the midnight dreams foreshadowing what is or about to be Last night I dreamed final wave is breaking down on me the final killing wave racing towards me and I grabbed on to a sturdy tree and I held on with my might and I waited for the end to strike But the water passed me by And I walk in your arms Holding you You had turned the tide And I see now the two of us together will get by I know the way you can get when you have not had a drink of love. Your face hardens, your sweet muscles cramp. Children become concerned about a strange look that appears in your eyes. Squirrels and birds sense your sadness and call an important conference in a tall tree. They decide which secret code to chant to help your mind and soul. Even angels fear that brand of sadness that arrays itself against the world and throws sharp stones and spears into the innocent and into oneself. I know the way you can get if you have not been out drinking love. Thank you. We women workers on the front lines learn to wear sturdy shoes, we were on our feet all day, every day, on the level, grounded, solid. No teetering heels for us, not made of that kind of stuff. But a few, just a few, always wearing heels, yearned upwards, wanting more, heads bumping against a glass ceiling, reeling, then shattering and clattering through to view something more and rock to the core. These women in tottering heels bore the birth of something new. This view of given stature from heels below, a little elevation needed to change the status quo. This circus view, the absurd upward cue of a heel. Click, 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 click. Two. Click, 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 click. The sound it announced her imminent arrival. A suitable warning like a bell on a cat's collar. This warning, the boss was near. She'd soon be here. Her staccato notes informed all of impatience or ire, sometimes just excited, passion on fire. My boss, Dr. B, Queen Bee of the Hive, was a little bit of a woman, fiercely alive, 
always in heels and stronger than steel. Three, my mom only wore heels on fancy occasions, going out to a special dinner, maybe a wedding or a funeral, maybe on Easter, especially if she got a new Easter hat. But often she chose to stay home and wear slippers. Four, <clears throat> I can't believe a group of Men are sitting around wondering about women in heels, and they're surprised and shocked and embarrassed. And I sit and wonder, geez, heels are such a small part of the juggle and the struggle. There are nuances always, always to navigate on being a woman. Like no really meaning no, and being a bitch or a witch, or and being told you must be sleeping with the boss, and finding out in the end you might just be the old maid. These are all terms to describe and define us as gender, but it's heels you're aghast with, so heels it will be. Five. Staccato note percussion begins the discussion of the absurdity accompanying women of power. A tippling tower of tippity heels becomes the necessary footwear to make all the deals. Is this really real? Six. I prefer to hide for now and dream up a future where we as women can appear without makeup or heels. We are coming and arriving and departing as leaders, as shakers, as movers, reminded of the staccato discussion and smiling at remembered percussion. Click, 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 click. Remember the sky that you were born under Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon, know who she is. I met her in a bar in Iowa City. Remember the sun's birth at dawn, that is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father, he is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth, we are earth. Remember the trees, plants, animal life who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them, they are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origins of this universe. I heard her singing Kiowa war dance songs at the corner of Fourth and Central once. Remember that you are all people and that all people are you. Remember that you are this universe and that this universe is you. Remember that all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember that language comes from this. Remember the dance that language is, that life is. Remember by Joy Harho. It was a time for jumping on the moon. It was a time for running with the bulls through town. And now we are swimming against the tide, against the tide. Time spent without cost, we will abide, we will abide. It was a time of aliens in the sky. It was a time of all our heroes lost, all lost, 
And now we are looking deep inside Deep inside We knew how to fly Gravity now pulls us down strong 